morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day. And we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best. And you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake. Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos will pay the bills. But you gotta be quick to get those fills. Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick. If that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick. Small gap down means it's time for a duck. But if it doesn't set up, then we don't give up. Good morning, everybody. We know why we came here today. Now let's get to it. Yeah. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Happy Monday morning, September 18th. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Got a few things going on this morning. I'm going to do the AM ratio iron condor Monday morning version. Uh, I've got a 3.5 DTE double calendar that looks like it's going to come off for a nice profit. Uh, was looking like the JSPs and the duck might set up. Price has bounced a little bit. So it may or may not. It's kind of borderline. But if it does, I will uh, look at taking a uh, duck and a JSP. First order of business then for me is I will buy the longs for my AM iron condor. So if the Monday I've got a 20 stop. So that's a 12 by eight for me. So I always like to put in my longs pre-market. <clears throat> Hopefully they get filled right at the bell and then I'm ready to ready to go with my OCO order after the bell rings. Looks like we're going to be a 10, 20, 25 or 30 wide between the shorts. So I'm actually going to use my quiet lunch template. Just need to change a few things. All right, 40 seconds till the bell. a 6-7 DTE that will take off Wednesday that's up nicely as well. Three, two, one, bell. All right, so my longs are in. So 
So I'm going to go 30 wide. So I need to change my target to 50, stop to 20. Go 25 wide here. Need to redo a couple of templates to be a little faster here, but. <clears throat> All right, filled on the 4460, 4435, filled at 2145. So I'm in on the AM ratio. The duck and the uh, JSPs technically did not set up. So I will pass on those. I'm going to go ahead and get my 35 DTE double calendar filled. All right, filled on that at eighteen ten. So just posted that in the uh, calendar channel. Nice winner there. All right, SPX opening a little quiet so far. VIX is up five point five and a half, up to fourteen and a half. Get our normal Monday pop. VIX D up seventeen percent. S&P slightly red, NASDAQ slightly green, Russell slightly red, Dow slightly green. A little Christmas tree action going. Uh, I didn't take a duck because <clears throat> I needed SPX to open down between 0.1 and 0.5%. I was looking at ES. I guess it did, didn't it? I was looking at ES pre-market. I didn't really pay attention to the official open of SPX, but yeah, it, it definitely qualified. For both JSP and Ducks could have been taken. So based on that, It's still trading. 
I'm going to put my order at 585 for a duck. If we get a little bit of a down, maybe I should get filled. Yeah, thanks, Mirage. It was not even paying attention to the official SPX open. Just looking at ES. So I've got an order on a duck at 585. If price pulls back a little bit, I should get filled on that. If it runs away to the upside, I will not. I can get in my deck within the first 15 minutes. So we'll see if it <clears throat> see if it comes down and gets me filled. My order is at 585, currently trading at about 555. A little drop in price. JSPs, I could still get in as well. All right, just got in some JSPs as well. My JSPs. Two hundred percent. Oh, just got filled on my duck. Five eighty-five. All right, so I'm in ducks and JSPs. I'm trying to set my OCO up on my JSPs here.
All right, there we go. Got my orders in. <clears throat> Uh, Michael Todd for my duck. Here, I'll just copy this here. There you go. I just posted my duck order. It's exactly like the back test. 60. 60 delta shorts and then 25 delta. Shorts on the put side. All right, so I got everything on that I wanted to this morning. Plus, we got the DKS at uh, 925 Central. Got a couple of time flies on from last Friday that did not get any theta decay yet. With this volatility increase. Fix up to 1465, up over 6%. Price coming down to lows of day. Pretty close to where we opened. For my AM ratio, my shorts are 4460 calls, 4435 puts. JSPs, they got a wide stop. So they got some they got some room to breathe. Although, yeah, looking at the price action on the daily chart doesn't look like that inviting for JSPs as well. But you never know. All we need is a little bounce on those things. We can get out of those with a profit.
we get up to about 4460 we'd probably get out of our jsps at 50 percent little 15 point bounce expected move to start the day is about 19. so if we opened at 40 call it 45. Sixty four, twenty six to the downside. Well, the Chiefs got to win this weekend, so that's that's good news. That first first start, not so good. This one a little bit better. Got our two big boys back, Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey. Don't act like you don't know America's team, Michael. All right, we got S and P's down six and a half. Nasdaq down thirteen. Russell down nine. Dow is still slightly green. Gold and silver flat. Notes and bonds flat. Oil and natty gas up about a percent. Grains down. What was that you were, Elliot? What was your? What are you posting on soybeans? What was the big deal there? Five minute drop out of the gate. Euro and pound flat, Bitcoin up 3%. Bitcoin getting a little overnight move up. Little 10 point range so far in SPX. Yeah, it looks like uh, getting some elevated IV and soybeans. It's not a bad idea. Elevated uh, IV across the board. Oil still going up. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. I like that, Elliot. Sell a little premium in soybeans. with the 95 dayers. Fifteen hundred calls. And I'm gonna go down to the twelve twenty puts. See what kind of skew we're dealing with here. ZSF24. Mm 
I think we'll do one to one. Build at 13 even. So the reason I didn't do two to one puts to calls on this one is, uh, does have a little put skew, but if you do two to one, then it kind of skews it too much the other way. So I'm just going to do one to one. All right, just posted that in the options selling channel. Good work, Elliot. Anybody else have any good ideas for me today? I like I like trade ideas on a Monday morning. SPX kind of bouncing up to the top end, end of its daily range. Got a uh, reverse hedgehog in gold that's got seven DTE left on it. We're up a couple hundred. If we get a, it's hoping we might get a little, little bonus bump out of gold today, but it's pretty flat. So we'll probably close that out today. I don't want to give give away that couple hundred bucks in profit that we're up. A lot of profit potential to the upside, though. I wouldn't. Uh, I would not blame you for wanting to hold. Although the expected move to, let's call it, well, to expiration 25th, you're not most likely going to get into the big profit area, but you know, could get up to say a thousand bucks still within the expected move. It made a big move up, <clears throat> but I will probably just close today. And some good decay coming into the AM ratio. Still down on the JSPs. Market kind of dropped right after I put those on. Down a little bit on the deck.
A little bounce up to about 4460. I was hoping we'd see a little more decay than we did on our time flies that we put on Friday, but this ball is staying pumped today so far. We do have our buddy Jerome taking the stand on Wednesday, which I'm sure has something to do with it. Today, let me bring the calendar down. Today, we got a whole lot of nothing. Tomorrow, a whole lot of nothing. Wednesday, 1 p.m. Central, FOMC, 1.30, FOMC press conference. Thursday, unemployment claims pre-market. Friday, PMI manufacturing report just after the market opens. VXX getting a little pop too. Wouldn't mind seeing a little, little volatility spike pre FOMC and get on some VXX vertical spreads. What I really like to see on VXX to put on those verticals is I like obviously for the price of VXX to be going up because that means volatility is spiking, but also the volatility on VXX to be high, you know, kind of in that call it 70 to 100 on the implied volatility indicator. And I'll, you know, even on the 21 day, I'd be good with it getting up there on the 21 day. I'd start to start to layer into some. Yeah, for volatility to stay pumped like this with no range is interesting. I would say if we get any kind of little bounce, that premium is just going to get sucked out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. I actually um, done quite a few of that. Um, sometimes UVXY, sometimes VXX. I usually gravitate to whichever one's priced higher because you got more premium. So I like VXX right now. It's trading at 21. UVXY is at 14. I assume you set those up with like no risk to the upside or very little. That's how I used to do it. Done a lot. I just uh, I've just kind of gravitated more just doing verticals. I mean, you get that 
Anytime you get a volatility spike, you almost always get that nice contraction. So I've just kind of gravitated more to verticals. Oh, you do no risk to the downside. Got it. See, I, I always did no risk to the upside because there's always that situation where you get the, uh, you know, the, the, the market drop or the situation where volatility just explodes. So I wanted to protect the upside of that. Whereas I would position my, my short strikes lower. So I'd still get, you know, price comes down. I would get that decay into the peak of my tent. By the way, help me pronounce that. Help me pronounce your name. I always look at it and I'm always scared to say it because I don't know how to say it. Is it Daedalus? Daedalus? Daedalus. Daedalus. Okay, got it. Cool. Ryan P., is there a way for profit to land at the max profit of that profit tent you're looking at? Are you talking about this time fly that's on my screen? No, that's not even a that's not even a pipe dream. I'm looking on these time flies, I'm looking for quick profits, five to ten percent. You, you know, you're talking about price pinning at 4470 at expiration on September 29th. That's just that's a lottery ticket. I don't I don't play that game. The whole basis of this strategy is just getting getting in, you know, and getting five to ten percent profits. Really managing risk too on the ones where price starts to move. Now, if you do ten contracts and you want to take nine of them off and play a little lotto with the last one. Sure. Have a party. <laughs> I used to do a lot of that, but I've come to realize that just sticking to the strategy that's higher probability typically works out better in the long run. We're at about four, five, uh, Getting some decay coming into this one now. Might be at about, depending on where you get filled. It's kind of kind of jumps around here, but probably at about four percent profit right now. Starting to see a little decay in our puts. Now, if we could just get a little bounce up to 4460, that would that would be good for everything. That would be good for all three zero DTE positions. I guess the AM ratio is good where it's at, but for the duck, for the JSPs. Still just kind of bouncing in this 10 point range, my friends. Yep, SJ, that those are from Tradehawk. By the way, we'll be we'll be sending out more information, but um we've got on the books a webinar with Lex from from uh, Tradehawk Tradier. He's the one that's uh, developed. He ba basically he developed Tradehawk. Uh, it was a separate company, and then they uh, Tradier ended up buying them. And so Lex uh, is with Lex and Tradehawk are actually part of Tradier now. So he will be leading the web class for us, and the date on that is I think October twelfth. So a few weeks. Yeah, thirty minutes after the market closes. So 3.30 p.m. Central on October 12th. We'll be posting and sending more information on that. But if you're interested, you can go ahead and mark your calendar for that one. Should be good.
I'm liking the trade hawk platform. It's uh I mean, there's some, you know, it's like anything, you got to get used to it. There's some little quirks, but there's actually a few things that I like better than Thinkorswim. Uh, right now, I'm just trading calendars on it. I wouldn't consider trading zero DTE on it yet. They are working on some of their OCO or, uh, orders functionality, but there's things like calendars, butterflies, I mean, any, anything that you don't need any complex OCO orders for are good. Zero commissions. Yep. And I had them. They also, I was able to get them to waive the, the monthly fee for navigation trading members. So no monthly fee, as long as your account's funded over 5,000 bucks or something like that. Um, and we'll, we'll be talking about all the details of this on the webinar, but yeah, no, no monthly fee, zero commissions for, um, <clears throat> options, equities. Um, there is a, uh, there's a 35 cent commit. I think it's, don't quote me on those 35 cents, I think for SPX plus the exchange fee. So SPX does, uh, you know, index options. Do you have a, do you have a commission, but like SPY, Apple, any any uh, American options, no zero commissions. Yeah, all all brokers use. I shouldn't say all, but I mean your tasty tasty lot, uh, tasty works or tasty trade, whatever they call themselves now. Uh, tasty trade, toss, Schwab. I mean, most brokers get paid make most of their money on payment for order flow. And uh, traders no different. The difference is they've decided their model is just going to be only be paid payment for order flow, not commissions. And the, the whole issue I had with them for the last two years was a, so the, the other part of their model business model is they don't, you know, like think or swim is TD Ameritrade's platform, right? Uh, Tradier was, was going off a model that they were basically a developers API broker. So, you know, bunch of different people have tried to build platforms that are executed through trader and nobody, nobody really could get it. You know, I mean, as far as like the functionality, at least for me, the function, I mean, I mean, there are, there are little unique boutique specialty platforms out there that, that execute through trader, but nothing that I could find any value in for the type of trading that we do. Um, trade Hawk has been in the works for quite a while. They, they had a different version and they kind of upgraded it to what they call trade Hawk 2.0 now. And, um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're basically trying to rival, rival toss eventually. They're certainly not there yet. So if you have expectations that they're going to be as good as toss, just put those away. Cause that's, that's not even, uh, it's not going to be that close. Uh, but I think over time, they will continue to get there. And in fact, um, you know, for the last couple of year and a half, call it, I've been, you know, having calls with the Tradier guys and Lex with Trade Hawk, and, um, and every, almost every single suggestion that I've made on the platform so far has been implemented. So they really are, they really want to build out the platform that us traders really want, um, build out the features and stuff. So that that's pretty cool. You know, any anytime I kind of see something, whether it's a little quirky aspect or anything, I just I record a loom, a screen share, and I send it over to Lex. And sometimes within a week, it's in the platform. So that's pretty awesome.
the other thing they'll be doing, you know, like, like I said, we'll be doing a, uh, be doing a webinar and then, um, put the other thing that they're gonna, that I wanted to make sure that they had for, for our members was, um, you know, just top notch support. And so the other thing that they're going to do is, um, you're going to be able to sign up for one-on-one -on -one sessions with, uh, with somebody or from, from trade Hawk to a answer all your individual questions, get you set up, make sure you understand all the nuances of the, of the platform, uh, on a kind of a one-on-one -on -one, or we could do small groups or whatever, but they're willing to do one-on-one -on -one for our, for our members to, um, to get everybody set up. So that should be pretty cool. Brento box in the house. What's up, buddy? It's been a while. All right, getting a little bump. Little bump bump. JSPs are now profitable. Ducky duck is profitable. Let's see on my duck. Targeting 465 to close half. It's currently trading at 530. Got a new high of day for SPX. I said before, if we get up to about 4460, that would hit our JSPs. Or if we just stayed here for a while. Ah, you and Queeks are boys, huh? What do you what are you primarily primarily trading these days, Brento? Still doing a lot of strangles, ducks. Oh, nice. Are you guys still in school, or did you graduate? USC, I assume. Oh, okay. USC. You're going to be playing prime time here. Was that next week or the week after? Saturday. Yeah, that'd be fun. We're about to see how good Colorado really is. Uh, been a lot of talking. A lot of talking. I mean, TCU is definitely a big win, but now it's time for the big boys. On our CL short strangle, we're getting close to 50% of max on the puts, but not quite there yet. Ah, Minnesota now, huh?
Oh yeah, for trading for sure. Although when I do travel to the West Coast, I do I do like uh I mean I get up early anyway, but so I do like I do sometimes like oh market opens at 6 30 a.m. I'm done by 1 30. I have the whole a whole day to do stuff after the market closes. I, I do kind of like that aspect. I'm not sure if I'd want to live in that time zone, but it is uh it is nice to to travel to sometimes. Yeah, stay in touch, Brento. Now, Hawaii, yeah, I, don't, I would not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. I'll let Tim Wise deal with that. Argentina, what, uh, what time is it in Argentina right now? Eleven seventeen a.m. Okay. Not bad. You get to sleep in. Uh, Vegas Michelle, when I put in my longs pre-market, how do I choose my strikes? I'm just going, you know, I go 60 to 70 points away from the shorts. So, you know, before, you know, SPX option prices kind of freeze up 15 minutes before the bell. So prior to that, I, I just get an idea of, okay, here's my, I get an idea of where my shorts are going to be based on, you know, approximately being $4, right. Which is what I'm targeting for my, for my entries. And then I, I just take from there, I go on the call side, I go up 60 to 70 points and try to, you know, if there's, if it's right between, and I say 60 to 70, because if it's right between, you know, five and 10 cents, I'm going to go with the five cent ones. Uh, and then same thing on the put side. I just look 60 to 70 points away. And then I buy those, just put the order in pre-market. And I, I, and then I just watch ES, you know, making, you know, if, obviously if it moves 15 minutes before the bell. I mean, if it moves 10 points, I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to need to adjust my strikes by, you know, 10 strikes, 10 points on the strikes as well. So that's all I do. All right, SPX still kind of hovering near the top of its range. We got the DKS coming in about five minutes. Oh, there's my DKS alarm. Five minute warning. I uh, accidentally had a tighter stop than I meant to. So it ended up working out in my favor, but unintentionally. I like to call those happy 
happy accidents, like Bob Ross used to say. Graham ratio should not be down a lot. Should be up. Right? Mine's up. Mine's up 3,000 bucks. Oh, gotcha. So as of now, my short strikes for the DKS would be 4465 calls, 4450 puts. Give it another couple minutes here. All right, so 4465 calls and 4450 puts. Man, premium dropped quick. Fill the eight oh five on my DKS. Eight oh five. So 685 should be profit target one.
525 should be profit target two. Stop should be twenty four fifteen. Yeah, close enough. All right. So on my JSPs, once I get to 20%, move my stop down to 100. All right. So for my JSPs, once I get to about 20% profit target, I move my stop loss to 100%. So it was, uh, it got there on the JSPs. My duck, it's not quite hit 20% yet. It's trading at about 510, profit targets at 465. My DKS, my shorts are 44.65 calls, 44.50 puts. I mean, we have got a snoozer on our hands today, my friends, so far. 
which is perfect for what we're doing. If I was trying to trade directionally, this would be brutal, but we're not. So it's good. Which makes sense. There's absolutely no scheduled news today or tomorrow. Calm before the FOMC storm. Yeah, I don't, I'd have to see data on that, Elliot. I know, I mean, I feel that way too, but I've been, my feelings have been proven wrong by data so many times that I don't know. <laughs> nice state of junkie. Sometimes my anecdotal thoughts about a strategy are so strong. I just know how it's going to test. And then I actually put the data to it. And I'm like, Oh, that's not even, not even close. It's a very humbling feeling. <laughs> I know I'm right. I'm not, I know I'm right. No, 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 you're not. All right, starting to see a little decay coming into our time flies as well. VIX was up six, now it's only up three. Yep, I'm in JSP's Theta Junkie. I think some others are as well. Yeah, Wuga, I just, uh, you know, Tim's got his style. It's certainly not my style. For me, it's just way too selective and filtered based on back tests. I just, I'm, I'm more of a probabilities trader. So I'm going to, I'm going to trade more, let the probabilities play out. Not that, you know, that's the right way or the wrong way. I mean, he's got the right way for him. I've got the right way for me. So it's really just about figuring out what, what's best for you. 
both will work. Both can work, I should say. My way's worked for me for a long time, and he's you know he has more confidence based on the back test being more selective and. You know, the other thing is, you know, based on, he said this many times, you know, based on his lifestyle, you know, he wants to trade, he wants to trade less. I prefer if the odds are in my favor to trade more. I just, I have not, I haven't not, well, for one, we don't, we ha, we don't, you know, we have data going back to May, right? Or, or if you're just using year to date, I just, I don't have, there's no data conclusive or enough for me to say, even, even Thursdays, you know, I, to me, I just, I still, I don't think not trading on Thursday, I still don't think that's conclusive. may change as we, as we continue to have more data on these things. My uh, thinking could certainly evolve, but at this point, I will continue to hammer it out every day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I definitely think based on the way volatility opens on different days of the week, that that the morning sessions can. There's a pattern there. For me, I just think for power hour specifically, you know, I don't think gaps matter that much. I don't think day of week matters that much, if at all. It's all about is price staying in the range at the end of the day or not? And I think it does 55 to 60% of the time. Yeah, I, don't, I just I just uh, mentioned that to Elliot Ryan P. I think um, I, I think I'd need to see more data. I think it's you know I certainly kind of like Elliot was saying. I I feel that way, but I'm not I'm not sure that that's I've been proven wrong by my feelings have been proven wrong by data so many times <laughs> that that I don't I don't I try not to go off of feelings anymore. All right, ducky duck still hanging around. Still hanging around that 510, 515 price. I need 465 to get out of half. So we just kind of got to stay up here for a while. Let some more decay come out. My JSP still need a little bump higher. Don't have to quite get up to 4460 anymore though. Maybe 4458. That's the beauty of theta decay. The longer it sits here, the less it has to move in your favor.
my AM ratio, I'm looking for 50%. <clears throat> Looks like some of you guys are hitting your 40s. So profit target on my AM ratio is at... Ten seventy, and my spread is currently trading at twelve fifty. So I need another couple bucks to come out of my AM ratio. All right, my friends, I think I'm going to jump off here. Hoping to pop some profit targets before we jumped off, but it's just going to give us a little slow decay. Like I said, on the JSPs, you got to move up to 44.57, 44.58. That should hit 50%. Uh, the Iron Duck is close to hitting 20% with a little bit more decay. The AM ratio, Iron Condor is over 40%. I'm looking for 50% to get out of half and reduce stop. So if we stay right here, that should happen shortly. And then lastly, the DKS. Just need a little move higher to hit first profit target and reduce stop on that one. So good shape on all of them. Just haven't hit anything yet. So uh, we'll be back for power hour at 1.50 p.m. sharp central time. Look forward to seeing you all then. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.